Okay, this is uh, Jan at Viking Aircraft Engines. I'm here with uh, home built help, and we're going to do a tip of the week. Uh, what we're going to do is introduce a new fuel system for all the aircraft that now are flying or are in the process of being built, uh, be it a Zenit kit, uh, an RB12 with uh, injected Rotax maybe, uh, someone with a UL engine that has an injection, fuel injection system, um, Viking engines of course, auto conversions, anything that needs uh, uh, 40 to uh, 45, 46 pounds of pressure which is the norm for all these engines. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what's out there uh, why uh, they might uh, benefit from a different system and uh, the different ways that the new system can be implemented into those aircraft. What we're up against with these engines is that uh, they require a certain amount of fuel pressure and it needs to be reliable meaning we can't have air bubbles and we, we can't have uh, uh, interruption in the fuel flow because the engine will sputter or quit. So. This is the, what's been used for several years. The Viking used this system as well. Basically, uh, you have to come off your wing tanks and tee them together and then feed two pumps individually through these external filters. This will be the low pressure side we, we refer to it as. Now you've got these fairly heavy duty uh, and, and high draw amperage pumps, uh, like six to eight uh, amps a piece, uh, which is kind of a heavy load uh, during multiple or dual pump operations such as takeoff and landing. Um, we've then uh, pressurized the fuel, we're coming out into a, an assembly that has a regulator which then bleeds excess fuel back to either a header tank which would feed this in the first place with a return going back to the header tank or uh, directly to a large fuselage tank in the aircraft or if we end up having dual tanks like most airplanes do in their wings and if we don't elect to use this tank we now need to not only select uh, which tank we are taking fuel from but we also have to select the same tank that we're returning fuel back to and then eventually we can then feed fuel to the engine so what ends up happening is that we have tanks fittings, T's, filters um, hydro pumps, a regulator, a return, um, a feed to the engine, uh, inline high pressure filter and then to the engine and uh, not to mention a selector valve. So we end up with an awful lot of parts that are necessary in order to do this properly. Um, it's getting kind of old-fashioned too. What happens is these pumps are have been not been used in for instance the automotive industry since the 80s because they were mounted on the bottom of a car now, uh, the last 15 to 20 years, these pumps have been in the fuel tank, which has a lot of benefits, and we're going to get into that now. We just looked at, quote-unquote, the old, which isn't so old, but we're just saying that there is a better way. And that's what we're doing now at Viking, and we're supplying this only you know, to all those engines that we just mentioned. Uh, here's the heart of the unit. It's a pump that we have made up for... Um, uh, to be compact and go into a fuel tank. Basically, the the module is now has everything uh, of those parts that you just saw in the old system condensed into here. And let's just point out a few of them. Uh, the regulator is built in. The uh, motor, basically the fuel pump, is built in, positive and negative. The um, filter to filter the fuel prior to going through the pump is part of it in the lowest part of the pump. It's uh, easy to make a connection to the system because it's uh, supplied with a pigtail that just wires up to your battery. The amperage consumption is much much lower. We're looking at 1.6 amps versus 6 to 8 amps per pump. The nice thing with this setup is that you can now have multiples of these. You can have one in each fuel tank if you would like to, for instance, install a flange either welded to the bottom of an aluminum tank uh, or you can have this welded to the bottom of a header tank or this can be bonded into a composite tank or even an aluminum tank. This will have studs in it. The pump will then fit from the bottom up which is kind of nice. Uh, a little bit tricky sometimes to get this in just like all fuel systems and there it goes. 
this goes like that. So basically this will be up inside. Fuel return is, is a, there's no more fuel return because it's done internally. You won't even have to worry about it um, or no, even know about it, but that's how it regulates the outlet pressure is by bleeding off a little bit of pressure inside. The pump motor is sized uh, specifically for that fuel pressure, meaning that only a small amount is returned, which in the older system, the pumps were always kind of too powerful, is why they draw a lot of amperage, and also because they're not cooled by the fuel, like this little guy sitting up in the pump. The other thing is, um, there are fittings available, readily available, where you can put your fuel hose on, and it goes on and it clips in, and it uses O-rings, so you might say, oh, that's not reliable, it just slid right on, but in fact, it's very reliable because it uses an O-ring that goes up against this nice polished surface. And you can disconnect it easily, and you can connect it really easily. So that's the, the heart of the system that we're going to be talking about today. A very lightweight, uh, about one to one and a half pound pump. Uh, you can put one in your fuel tank. You can even put two in each fuel tanks um, if you want redundancy. Or you can have one in one tank, one in the other tank, and you will have the redundancy by having two of them. The only drawback there, which is minor for people flying locally, would be that if one pump fail, you would also lose the availability of the fuel in that fuel tank. Now, you could, and we're going to talk about that in detail, um, do something about that. And, uh, but this is the basic part of the unit and uh, the new and improved fuel system for light aircraft using the new fuel injected systems that are so available nowadays. Here's a, a way to do this. Uh, take these small pumps we just looked at and install them, which we have done here at Viking, in these little header tanks. Uh, there are 1.6 gallons, uh, I'm sorry, they're 0.6 gallons each. Um, someone mentioned to me on a forum that they would also like to see their header tanks be a little bit of a reserve of fuel, which in case, uh, in uh, Zenith for instance, there's plenty of room above here, and these are very easy to install behind the um, uh, get baggage compartment in a Zenith, and they could be twice as tall if you wanted them to, do, to be. You know, uh, they come with rubber mounts uh, that you can mount it to the floor, maybe put an extra piece of metal down and make it a little bit stronger. And then if you made it a uh, two-foot tank or in a low-wing airplane, just a six-inch tank, um, or whatever you want, three, three feet for that sake, as long as you have room. And that could give you uh, up to about three gallons if you had two two-footers. Now, the nice thing with this system is that they're individual. You have one pump completely separate from the other pump, which means that you have a redundant system. You... Uh, while explaining exactly how it would be installed would, would tell you how simple it now has become because you're putting these two in the back of the plane you can have one on each side of the plane or you can mount, make a bracket and put them all you know together in one place and then you have your inlets up here and now you have a choice you can either go with uh, barb fittings and fuel injection hose which is a high quality uh, fuel line that we have over here uh, or you can put AN fittings in and you can flare your, uh, your soft aluminum tubing and you can run those from your wing tanks down to here. Some people prefer that. Um, either way, it's just fine as far as what Viking is concerned. Uh, so you would run one feed from each tank and one vent back to the, to the same tank. Now, you could do the left tank to this and the right tank to this, the feed and the return, the feed and the return, or you could tee the feeds from both tanks into both of them and then run the returns separately, depending on what kind of a system you would want. Um, if you run them individually, then like we talked about before, if one fails, you would not be able to draw fuel from the other tank. One option there that we've thought of, if that was a concern for a builder to keep implementing additional safety features, would be that if you ran fuel to here and you ran fuel to here from the left and the right tank, you could simply make a crossover T and Viking has a uh, fuel solenoid valve that you would leave as an emergency and it would always be shut unless you hit the switch you would open it and then you would be able to take fuel from both tanks. 
the nice thing with that is you would not need this this crossover valve would never be used under normal uh, circumstances and so then when you do have normal circumstances you're running this pump and you're selecting that tank you're running this pump and you're selecting this tank which guess what gets rid of your fuel selector valve so there's less plumbing less fittings and so forth and so on now when you come out at the bottom of these tanks uh, now you're going to a single engine unless of course you have multi-engine that's a different story now there are some options here what you can do is you can either very simply tee these together you have a hose from here to here and here and this goes to your engine and you're done now there is a check valve in this pump and there's a check valve in this pump so if this all fails um, you're still running on this and the same with this if this fails you're running on this one one alternative way uh, if you want even further redundancy as far as completely separating these without relying on any of these parts or this little piece of hose or anything is you could put a T here with these very readily available check valves one here and one here and then come into these check valves that means that when the fuel passes this check valve it can't go this way and if this plastic piece broke off or this whole pump fell out of the airplane or whatever this is now truly a redundant system to the other one so you would have true redundancy with this and you would have all the safety features of being able to use fuel in both tanks with this solenoid valve up here or for local flying keep everything very simple you know come into this come into this tee it together go to the engine and then of course you do need still this high pressure filter because you want and you want to make sure that uh, in and out is correct this is out um, because um, that's your last catch you know before the uh, engine even though there are filters here prior to the pumps so Viking does sell this as a uh, different length of sump tanks. Basically, the fuel pump is already in there, gasket, the, the flange to mount it. Uh, the advantage of having this in different lengths, of course, is that not every aircraft is the same. The airplane might, the engine might be the same, and it requires the same steady fuel flow. But for instance, if you have a low-wing airplane, a uh, six-inch or a four-inch four tank is adequate because you don't, it doesn't have to be any taller than the pump assembly itself. And the advantage with that is that now the fuel, uh, the pump can sit in the bottom of the V of the tanks, meaning uh, at the bottom of the spar on the floor. That's usually the lowest space in a low wing airplane where you can get a little bit of gravity feed into filling the sump. And from there on, the pump works the same as if you had a larger tank. If you go with a one foot tank, it's a, a good size, it makes a fairly light weight, it mounts very easily, doesn't need a whole lot of structure because the whole thing even with fuel is not too, too heavy. Now if you want it also as an extra sump tank, meaning that you want to be able to run your wing tanks basically until there's no fuel and then this becomes your 30 minute reserve between this and your second tank, then you might want to go with a two footer and then you have to make a little bit more effort into structurally securing it to the airframe structure. Uh, you can use the rubber mounts that we have uh, available down here. Uh, you can use 4-inch ADEL clamps around the body. But also the pump has lots of 1032 tapped holes up here that don't go through. And those then can be used for mounting little aluminum brackets, uh, stringers to tie it to the airframe structure. A lot of times a, a stringer is brought across the fuselage and then tabs are used to hold it pump from moving or the tank from moving. So you can go to uh, Viking, you can call Samantha at 386-566-2616 or you can go to vikingaircraftengines.com, go to the shopping cart and this is available for all builders. It's not just necessarily for the Viking engine, it will work with the older Viking engines, the 110, it'll work with the UL, the Rotax Injected and you can pick up all these pieces from our shopping cart and it's already been uh, tested and designed and engineered to work and give you a reliable fuel system with a minimum amount of weight and the maximum amount of redundancy.